Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to talk about toners and essences. Are they necessary and are there any that I would recommend to you guys? Toner versus essence, I find is used somewhat interchangeably in Western skincare, and both are intended to be applied to the skin in your skincare routine after cleansing but before moisturizers. Toners include a broad category of things that once upon a time were actually intended to help normalize the skin barrier pH after cleansing. A long time ago, the soaps that we used to wash our face were very harsh and a very high pH and really screwed up our skin barrier and left the skin dry, irritated. And these particular soaps, many of which were formulated with lye, for example, uh, when admixed and used alongside hard water, could leave almost like a filmy, scummy uh, residual behind on the skin. But in the modern era, that is not really something that is an issue anymore, as cleansers have come a long way in their formulations, and cleansers for for facial skin are very gentle and pH uh, generally around 5.5 to 6.5. So they're compatible with minimal disruption to the skin barrier, though inevitably with cleansing, you do have some disruption of your skin barrier that can set you up for dryness. So it is important to moisturize, but the cleansers that we're washing our face with are not nearly as, as irritating and drying as they once were. And so we really don't need toners for the purpose of normalizing skin pH. And normalizing skin pH is not necessarily something that you should try and focus in on or perfect. We know that using a moisturizer helps in normalizing the acid mantle and normalizing the skin barrier pH without you having to do a lot of chemistry and, and you know, pHing of your products to try and come up with some magic math to do this yourself. Your moisturizer will help take care of that and help to normalize your skin barrier after, after cleansing. So you don't necessarily need a toner to do that anymore. Even if you live in an area with hard water, toner is not necessary in helping your pH of your skin. Uh, the hard water, it, it will not correct that part. It at one point would have been helpful for kind of removing that filminess of the soap and, uh, and hard water deposits, but that is, less, that is going to be less helpful in the modern era with modern cleansing technologies. Today though, toners usually contain active ingredients like acids, so for example, many toners will have uh, glycolic acid to help exfoliate the skin. And they'll also contain uh, vitamins or antioxidants sometimes. They may have some skin conditioning and moisturizing ingredients as well to counteract the irritation that happens with the active acid ingredients. Um, and so they can, they can be the type of product that is often heavily marketed towards people with acne prone or oily skin. They also can have alcohols in them, low molecular weight alcohols. I have a video talking about low molecular weight versus high molecular weight alcohols in skincare products, so definitely check that out. But as I said in that video, alcohols and alcohol dense, uh, low molecular weight alcohol dense toners can be very drying for the skin and set people up for a lot of irritation. So in toners in particular, they can, they can get you into some issues. An essence is very similar to a toner, maybe more so skewed towards moisturizing botanic actives rather than acids, and it you know, helps in enhancing hydration and putting moisture into the skin. Essences can help actually in um, basically keeping the, helping with penetration of active ingredients because what they do is they hydrate up the uh, top layer of the skin, the stratum corneum, they kind of soak it, almost like water. And in doing so, they allow for more penetration of active ingredients. So if the toner is also formulated with maybe some botanic compounds that are intended to be anti-inflammatory or have some sort of skin brightening property, and you know, are intended to improve hyperpigmentation, then using it in a essence vehicle potentially can enhance the penetration. So a lot of times people will ask me, well, aren't essences a more effective and efficient delivery system for active ingredients? Not necessarily. So uh, they, tend to, they tend to just help the water solubility of things in terms of getting into your skin. Your skin's this waxy lipid barrier, and so sometimes that, that is part 
of the hurdle of getting getting active ingredients in is that is that it just kind of shields them out and so theoretically an essence may aid in that now while it's helpful that essences might help in uh, increasing the penetration of active ingredients remember they do so by basically increasing the permeability of your skin barrier so with that in mind it's really important that these products be used on the skin after cleansing to to you know help get your next step ingredients in a little better but very important is that they be followed up with an occlusive moisturizer uh, because the uh, increased permeability of the skin barrier if left unattended and without a moisturizer on top that increased permeability barrier is going to lose water more readily and so as a result you will become more prone to dryness and irritation so if you have an have an essence that you're using it's really important to seal it in there with a heavier moisturizer whether it be a moisturizing lotion like CeraVe PM or a moisturizing cream like CeraVe cream. Check out my videos on moisturizers. I give numerous recommendations. I also have videos on moisturizers for oily skin and my oily skincare videos, those for sensitive skin. So I'm not gonna talk about moisturizers in today's video. I'm just gonna talk about the essences and toners, but do know that with the essences, they have to be followed up with a heavier moisturizer. Essence versus toner versus serum is not Hard, a hard definition is something that, in my opinion, skincare manufacturers just slap on the front of the product in an effort to sell you another product. And really they exist on this continuum of like, is this really even necessary? And the short answer is no. Yes, some people will benefit from using either a toner or an essence. They can have very good ingredients, be formulated well, um, but they're not necessary. And if anything, much of the time, they contain other ingredients in them, whether it be fragrance, essential oils, a lot of botanic extracts that are poorly studied, and these can set the individual up for a lot of irritation. And uh, particularly, as I said, you know, they increase penetration of things. So increasing the penetration of irritating ingredients is not, is not good. So while some people will find that these are beneficial in their skincare routines, they're not necessary. And if irritation develops or skin problem develops, they're definitely one of the first things to stop because it's kind of like, you know, just a more likely culprit in your skincare routine. Who will benefit from a toner the most? Probably people with oily skin, honestly, because toners can help and toners often include ingredients that are helpful for degreasing the skin a little bit or for uh, controlling oiliness, for helping in exfoliating skin cells. If you have acne prone skin and you suffer from closed comedones, toners may be useful in your skincare routine. But beware, they can be very drying. Just because you have oily skin and just because you have acne prone skin does not mean that dry skin is a good thing for you. And so you wanna avoid that actually. So you have to be really careful that the toner is not super drying because when your skin gets dry, it's not that it causes it to make more oil per se, but it kind of does because you lose water and that drives a lot of irritation into your skin and inflammatory mediators that can increase sebum production and make you more oily. And those inflammatory mediators also can trigger flaring of acne, worsening of acne, and all sorts of skin problems. So if the toner is too drying, it really can set you up for failure. Um, or if it's a dr more drying toner, that kind of helps in removing some of the excess oil and sebum. If you're using it too frequently, you know, you may be overly doing it and stripping your skin. So it's a delicate balance and it's not intuitive. It takes a lot of trial and error, mostly error. So I say skip it, you know, more, more likely to be harmful than helpful. But that being said, I do know that many of you use toners out there and find them incredibly helpful. And I can see why. But as I said, they can be irritating, they can cause problems, and they're one of the first things to stop if an issue occurs.
Because they can be drying and irritating, they are not for people with sensitive skin. They're gonna increase uh, dryness, and whenever you have increased dryness, that can increase sensitivity. Definitely not a good idea for people with rosacea. Um, and if you have dry skin, you know, if they've got a lot of low molecular weight alcohols in them, it's gonna just dry out your skin even further. Um, so they're kind of help, they can be kind of helpful for oily skin types mostly. Now, who will benefit from an essence? An essence may be better, something that people with dry skin find is more useful in their skincare routine. Um, an essence-like product with a lot of hydrating ingredients can maybe help in enhancing delivery of moisturizing ingredients to the skin and the skin barrier, keeping the skin barrier hydrated overall. But again, the devil is in the details. If the product has a lot of fragrance and irritating compounds, as it's increasing penetration of the, of the humectants and moisturizing ingredients, it's also increasing penetration of those irritating ingredients as well and putting you at risk for problems. So again, it is going to be the first thing to skip when a problem develops. So take on points, while toners and essences may be helpful, they can deliver some active hydrating ingredients or active ingredients intended for some sort of specific outcome to the skin. Uh, they can increase the chances and risk of irritation, so they should be one of the first things you consider chucking when skin problems arise, whether it be flares of your acne, excessive dryness, even hyperpigmentation. I mean, if your skin is dried out, uh, that's going to create more inflammation in your skin, and inflammation actually uh, puts the gas, presses the gas pedal on uh, pigment production and causes your hyperpigmentation to be more persistent. So they're kind of the, one of the first things you may want to consider stopping when skin problems become worse or start flaring or issues start arising. All right, but what are some products that I happen to think are good toners, essences? A lot of them are actually, that I'm gonna chat with you guys about, are labeled as lotions because they're Japanese, but I view them as kind of the same thing. The key with these products that I'm gonna recommend is that you apply them to your face after you've cleansed the skin while the skin is still damp, and then immediately after you apply a heavier moisturizer on top. And you know, there are a lot of different techniques out there on the internet as to how to apply these to damp skin. Some people use a, a cotton swab to pat it in. Some people pat it in with their hands. I personally just uh, massage it in a circular fashion. And the reason for the circular fashion with my finger pads is that actually there was a small study showing that circular um, uh, rubbing kind of motion allowed for better uptake into the follicular orifice, the pore. And so you could probably get uh, better localization of, of the hydrating active ingredients doing, doing more of a circular finger pad motion as opposed to tapping onto the, onto the skin. Uh, your skin's this kind of complicated 3D structure, so you may just be tapping out into points of, of contact and convexity that aren't really where you want it to go. So I recommend doing kind of a circular fashion all over, all over the face um, and avoid the eye area. If, particularly if you're using a product that has acids in it, you wanna avoid the eye area and around the mouth. Um, I mostly, uh, when I've tried these, just kind of focus it on the upper cheeks area or the forehead, um, so in those areas. One that I really enjoy is a Hadalabo Hydrating Lotion. This is basically a humectant rich hydrator that can be applied, again, as I said, to damp skin after cleansing and then follow it up with a heavier moisturizer to lock that stuff in place. This is very good if you have dry skin, sensitive skin. Honestly, this is, this is one of the better ones to consider uh, for really just any skin type. No fragrance, no essential oils, no irritating compounds. It doesn't really have any active ingredients other than a skin hydrator. So this, this will help in, uh, help to, uh, so this will help boost up hydration in the skin, which everyone can benefit from. And another one along that vein that is a Japanese product that I, I enjoy quite a bit is the Juju Aqua Moist Hyaluronic Acid uh, Moisture, Moisturizing Lotion that uh, contains hyaluronic acid and humectant. It can just help in increasing uh, the penetration of hydrating ingredients and it delivers hyaluronic acid to help hold on to some water in there. So that's another good one. And then a third one, also Japanese, also Hadalabo, that I've talked about in a dedicated video, um, is the Hadalabo Arbutin Whitening Lotion. Now this is a product that contains alpha arbutin, which can be helpful for improving hyperpigmentation, accelerating the rate of clearance of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, uh, will not only increase hydration 
in the skin, but help in delivering the arbutin to the skin and maybe help in accelerating the improvement of hyperpigmentation. So I really like that. Those are three Japanese, you know, kind of fall in this category of essence toner, but are actually lotions. Um, and you know, there, there are some nuances, I'm sure, in nomenclature between, between the different ones in Japanese skincare and Korean skincare. But I, I feel as though they work in, 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 skin, in a skincare routine and serve the same purpose. So that's why I'm bringing them up here and I have used them. They are free of added fragrance and irritating crap. So they're pretty low risk as far as these types of products go. Now, in terms of Korean products, probably the only one that I have used and felt like, dang, this actually did maybe put a little bit of extra pep in my stuff in terms of hydration would be the uh, Pyeongkang Yule Essence Toner. I'll list it down below for you guys. Uh, that contains root type extracts that are humectants and I love that. Uh, I had no issue using it. Did not contain anything that was irritating. Uh, but because the ingredients are botanic root extracts, uh, you know, not super well studied, they're kind of that unknown territory and that it does still have the potential to cause irritation for someone. These products that I mentioned here by Hadalabo up until this point, they have fewer unknowns. They have hyaluronic acid, which is pretty inert and not very irritating. And they have Arbutin, which can be a little bit irritating, but um, at any rate, the Pyeongkang Yule one is a good one and I'll list it down below for you guys. Again, after cleansing to a damp face and then follow it up with a heavier moisturizer. Now, one product that personally I have actually tried because a lot of you have asked me about it is this Dear Claire's uh, Supple Preparation Unscented Toner. Um, you guys really seem to enjoy this and I've been trying it out for a time now um, from here and there and I actually do enjoy it myself. But my issue with this product is that it has a rose, uh, rose flower, uh, where is it? Yeah, rose flower extract. That's kind of, that's fragrance. Extracts of rose can have geraniol in them and geraniol is part of fragrance and it's something that can cause a lot of irritation and sensitivity for people. So I don't recommend this per se. I think this is a much riskier product. That being said, it does have some great humectant ingredients. It's got licorice root, which is a humectant, as well as a skin brightening agent, helpful for inflammation. It has panthenol, a skin conditioning agent, and it also has some copper tripeptides, which can help in firming the skin. Um, so there's, there's some good stuff. Centella asiatica or gochi cola, a botanic ingredient that has been shown to be helpful for wound healing, maybe helpful as kind of an anti-aging ingredient. It's got beta glucan in it uh, and sodium hyaluronate, which are humectants. Uh, the other potentially problematic ingredient in this though is also going to be the aloe leaf extract, mostly just water, but again, if you'll recall from my aloe vera video, um, I did point out that aloe is an ingredient that can cause irritation for people. Uh, so this is this is the riskiest one that I would I would I would talk about here, but I have tried it and I do get asked about it a lot. Um, it's not my my most recommended though. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't feel like I'd be as confident that this is going to be as helpful for as many people. So comment below on what essences and toners you guys use. I don't use them in my skincare routine. I try them out for you from time to time, but I don't, it's not something a part of my routine skincare that I incorporate, it's just too much. Uh, the best thing in skincare, the best tenant in my opinion is to keep things minimal and simple. Uh, reduces the, the risk of irritation and problems. Uh, so I don't, I don't like using things like this on an ongoing basis. I really just use them to try them out here and there. Um, but I'll list them down below for you guys. Comment below on which ones you've tried again. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.